Hey everyone, thanks for coming back for this week's quick tip. You know, the other day when I was talking with my wife and we were going over the videos and what's coming up in the future and what we're cooking and quick tips, one thing she said to me was, you know, all, with all the years you worked in restaurants, all the information that you learned and all the things you did over the years, you really should share that information with people because it's valuable stuff, especially when you're working in the kitchen. And the proper storage of food is a big deal. It's something I think we should go over. So here's some quick tips for the week. Three basic categories when we're talking about food. Seafoods, meats, red meat, poultry, fruits and vegetables. So seafood, let's start with that. Seafood, of all the stuff you're going to buy, seafood is going to be your most perishable food item that you bring home. Whenever you go out and buy seafood, no matter where you buy it, when you bring it home, your best bet is to cook it that day. If not that day, the next day. 24 to 48 hours after you buy seafood, it should be cooked, hopefully consumed, if not refrigerated and saved for the next day, but I would cook it and consume it within 24 to 48 hours for its freshness. After that, bacteria and enzymes and everything starts to change and it happens very rapidly with seafood. So whenever you buy it, it really should be one of those items where you're planning on having it that evening, you buy it that morning, you cook it that night. It's the best and safest way to handle seafood. Meat, red meat, poultry. An important thing to look at when you're buying chicken and red meat or any poultry is the use by date, the sell by date that's on the meat. Use by date is important. That's the date that is recommended that you have cooked that food by. When you bring it home and you keep it in your refrigerator, number one, always store chicken at the very bottom of everything that's in your refrigerator. Raw chicken goes on the bottom. Above that can be red meat and ground meats, but chicken is always on the bottom. And when you look at that use by date, and you've hit that date, cook it, even if you're not gonna eat it. If you've got a, a thing of chicken breasts and you've hit the use by date, even if you're not having chicken that day for lunch or dinner or breakfast, why not? Cook it that day. That way you can cook it, you can cool it, you can keep it in your refrigerator, and then you've got a few more days before you've gotta get rid of it. You definitely wanna pay attention to that use by date. Very, very, very important. And the last thing is fruits and vegetables. When you bring fruits and vegetables home, usually you put the vegetables in the refrigerator, depending on what it is, maybe onions you keep out, and some people keep tomatoes out at room temperature. And a lot of the fruit stays out. Apples usually stay out, bananas usually stay out, things like strawberries and grapes, they traditionally go in the fridge. You can mix match those things, but that's when it starts to affect when and how things ripen. When you have items that you want to ripen faster, maybe bananas or even avocados, you put those in a brown paper bag and sit them out at room temperature, they're going to ripen faster. On the flip side of that coin, if you take maybe some apples, and instead of keeping them out at room temperature, you put them in your refrigerator, that will slow down the ripening process and they, might, they, they will even last longer. But you wanna pay attention to how ripe something is when you buy it, because that will significantly cut down on how long you can have it at home and consume it before it goes bad. So it's always better to steer on the side of buying something that is not completely ripened yet. Bring it home, let it have a few days to ripen before you eat it and then have to get rid of it. But it's always good to give yourself some time. And when you're storing these items, it's important to pay attention to what you're storing where and how you're storing it. Like I briefly said a minute ago, when you are storing meats in the fridge, raw food always goes on the bottom, especially chicken. You don't want any liquid coming from the containers that they're packed in to drip onto anything else, especially ready to eat foods that are not going to be cooked to high temperatures where bacteria can be killed off. Moving up from there is where you can, you put, you can put raw seafood above raw chicken. 
moving up from there is fruits and vegetables and ready to eat foods. Work your way down to what requires time and heat to cook. And that's all. That was it. Wasn't that fast? Things to take away from this. When you're looking at things like meat and poultry, look at that use by date. You want to get it cooked before or on that date, whether you're going to eat it that day or not. You can always save it for a few days after you cook it, but make sure you do it before the use by date. If you can't, put it in the freezer. That will buy you some time. Seafood, most perishable item. 24 to 48 hours after you buy it, you got to make sure that that stuff is cooked and consumed. And fruits and vegetables, especially when you have the items that you're leaving out at room temperature, give them a few extra days to ripen. Don't buy the brightest colored one. Maybe the green banana would be better to bring home because then you've got a few days before you can eat it. Save it some time. And if you put things like that in a brown paper bag, they will definitely ripen a lot faster. That's all I've got for you folks. Hope you're enjoying this week. See you in a few days. We'll cook up some more holiday items. Take care. Bye-bye.